Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to fix NAT. Troubleshooting NAT when it's just not working as we had expected. Now NAT can be a little bit confusing with all of the terms inside local, outside global, but assuming you've got those down, the world of NAT isn't really too big. So the number of things we have to check in order to find the problem are relatively small. So the good news is I'm pretty confident you can find the answer relatively quickly. We're going to go ahead and the first thing you want to do is confirm your NAT configurations and we'll run through a few steps on on that. After that we need to take an, another look at at access lists but specifically access lists that are not directly related to NAT that could be affecting how NAT is operating on your router. And then finally we have to take a look at the routing involved. Perhaps NAT is working fine and the the real problem is with the routing. Okay, by now you're probably familiar with this NAT diagram. So let's begin with our configurations. One of the most common mistakes is to forget to define your inside and outside NAT interfaces. Everyone is so focused on the actual NAT statements themselves, creating the pool, maybe an access list as well, that we forget to jump into interface mode and issue these commands. So check those first. Without these, nothing's going to work. Now speaking of forgetting configuration commands, if you're using PAT, it's very easy to forget your overload parameter. Because remember, this command is just like dynamic NAT, except we're adding just that one key word at the end. And so if you forget it, then you're going to be configuring dynamic, not port address translation. So your results uh, are going to be not what you thought they were. Now for both PAT and dynamic NAT translation, we need to make sure that our access list actually identifies all of our inside local IPs. So on our network here, we have a slash 28. The biggest problem that occurs m most often is the wildcard mask in your access list. Is it properly configured to identify the slash 28? If not, some of these IPs might not be identified as candidates for NAT. Now speaking of access lists, other access lists on your router could be affecting how NAT is functioning. Now remember, this access list is not applied anywhere in terms of interfaces. It's only being referenced in order to identify our local area traffic. But this router could have an access list on the inside or the outside NAT interface. And depending on how that access list looks, it could be blocking some of your traffic. So remember this. If you have additional access lists that are applied to your inside or your outside NAT interface, when inbound traffic hits an access list, that access list is going to be applied first. And then if the traffic is allowed to pass, then your NATing will occur. So that's on the inbound. On the outbound, you have traffic in the router, it'll get NATed first, and then the access list will be applied to it. If it's allowed, then it will exit the interface. Okay, so you can see how an access list applied to an interface can really mess with your results, and that may be uh, configured properly. So confirm those access lists. When in doubt, and if you're comfortable doing this, you can remove an access list, see if NAT works, and then put it back on. Or you can enable logging on the access list. There are a number of things you can do or go line by line through the configuration to confirm it's not blocking unintentionally any of the IPs you're using. Now for dynamic NAT, we need to make sure that our inside global pool is going to be big enough to cover all of our inside local IPs. So we have a slash 28 on our network. On our router, our NAT pool has to be at least a slash 28. If your global pool is too small, let's say instead of a slash 28, you have a slash 29 configured, then obviously it's not going to be big enough to handle all of the IPs in your slash 28 on the inside locals. So some IPs will just not have uh, a corresponding inside global to be NATed. Because remember, even though it's dynamic, each IP in your global pool is singled out for only one IP uh, on your inside locals. Okay, 
So another thing to consider, speaking of nap pools, is make sure that they don't overlap. You may have a couple of them because you may have several inside interfaces and a different NAT pool is used for each one. Well, if these overlap with each other, your results will be unexpected. And that could be a very confusing thing to troubleshoot. Why is one IP getting uh, a global um, uh, IP which it shouldn't? Well, confirm that your pools don't overlap. That's a common mistake as well. Now finally we mentioned routing. And routing can really interfere with NAT even though NAT is configured properly. Now the first way this can happen is, let's say on our diagram here, we actually have two links to the internet. And this blue one does not have any NAT configured. It's not an outside interface. But let's say because of the way your routing is set up, any traffic to this web server is going to be routed out this interface. Well, because it's not in a NAT outside interface, your NATing is not going to be taking place. And the web server will not be seeing traffic. Let's say if you're using this IP for an overload, the 201.221, the web server won't see that. And so your return traffic is not going to arrive back at your router. So that's a, that's a big one, making sure that you're routing out interfaces that are configured for NAT. The second thing that has to do with routing is if you are successfully NATing and you are using this 201.221 IP, make sure that the destination and the destination routers can actually get back to this IP. So if this server here cannot properly route back to this public IP, then uh, you know clearly this is not going to work. And you may or may not have access to the routers along the way. Um, uh, you can uh, confirm your uh, BGP statements if you're advertising networks uh, to the internet or if this is on an internal network uh, maybe you can jump on some of the other routers and check their routing tables to see whether or not they know about this address okay so those are some of the common problems now along the way you can use a lot of the verification commands we've covered in the other tutorials so the show IP NAT translations command, you can see what's in the NAT table. That's very useful for finding out what's actually happening. You can also look at the show IP NAT statistics command to get some information on misses or how much of your pool is being allocated. There's a lot of useful information there. It'll identify your uh, interfaces if they're configured, uh, which one is the inside, which one is the outside. And then also if you really want the granular detail enable IP NAT debugging and just remember that could uh, introduce a performance hit on your router so if this is a production device think twice about doing that okay so these are some of the things you can uh, take a look at when you're troubleshooting NAT thanks for watching